So what we're going to do here is actually get our application set up. And before we get too far, I want to make sure things are consistent. So I'm going to make sure that I'm using the latest version of Node, the latest version of Rails, and the latest version of Ruby. So there's a few ways to do that. Um, and I'm actually going to use documentation from Jumpstart, which I've is very helpful and has helped me in the past. So I'm going to use RBNV or RubyNV. Never actually had to say it out loud, but this handles your Ruby version. From there, you're also going to want to make sure that you have Rails installed and that you're using the latest version of Ruby here. This is from Chris Oliver, who maintains Go Rails and Jumpstart and this is a good resource to get up and running. Now I already have Rails and Ruby installed on my machine, so I don't need to do those steps, but it's important that those steps are completed. Now to make sure I'm running the latest version of Ruby, which as of this date is 2.7.1, I'm just gonna run Ruby-V, and I can see that I'm using the latest version here. I also wanna make sure I'm using the latest version of Node which is 12.18.3. If I run node-v, I can see that. And I happen to be using NVM, which is a tool that helps you change versions. So earlier I ran NVM install, and I think it just ran 12. And it'll just install the latest minor version based off of that. So you can see here it's already installed. The next thing you want to do is make sure that Rails is up to date. And Rails is currently at version 6.0.3.2. And if I run Rails-B, I should get that number returned in the console. Okay. And the way I did that was after having Rails installed globally, you can run gem update Rails and this will update it globally. And as you can see here, there's nothing to actually update. So now that I know I'm using the latest version of Rails, Ruby, and Node, I can go ahead and spin up the new project. So if I do Rails new, and I'm gonna call this Stride Catcher. Now I'm gonna pass in this flag here for the database, and I'm gonna uh, pass in post let me make sure I spell it right, but Postgres QL, Postgres QL. And this is because eventually we're gonna get this on Heroku and Heroku's default database is Postgres. And I like to just have my local database be consistent with production database. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And, oop, looks like we already have a problem. Invalid value, oh, you know what? Spelling, there we go, paste that in. Now if I go ahead and hit enter, this will go ahead and run and install any of the gems and any of the uh, node packages that are needed for the project. Okay, Rails successfully installed, which is always good, it usually takes a few minutes. So now the next thing I wanna do is actually open this up in my code editor. So I'm gonna cd into stride catcher. And then I'm using, using Visual Studio Code. So if I run code and then a space and then a period and hit enter, it should actually open up my code editor into this new Rails project. Okay, now that I'm in my code editor, I'm gonna go ahead and make my first commit. So, so if I do git, well, let's, let's do git status first, just to see what's going on. So you can see all the files that Rails just made. I'm gonna do git add all, and then git commit. I have my code editor set up to actually allow me to make my commit messages within VS Code versus Vim, which is the default setting, I think, which is why this panel just opened up here. I'm just gonna call this initial commit 
And actually, the reason I even do this is because I have spell check enabled. And it's basically because, as you saw earlier, I'm not great at spelling. So I just like to have this up here uh, and use this editor. Plus, it's also easier to click around. I'm not as good with Vim, so I just like to use this. So I'll save that, close it, and now we have our first commit message in there. The next thing I want to do is just add a file that sort of sets the node version for anyone else that's using this project. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create this file here. And I should say, actually, before I get too far, this is from the NVM package. So this, this is already installed on my machine. So if I go here and run NVM, that command works. And this, this command is what allows me to change node versions on my computer um, globally and locally. And that's what we did earlier. So I set up um, node to be the latest stable release to this version right here. So now I kind of want to just also add that file or add a file into my project that sets that in case someone else is working on this project, it'll make for a more consistent experience. And that's actually happening here with this .ruby version file. It's set to 271, which is good. So I'm gonna go here, create a new file. And then according to the docs, I just need to add that in here, which will it'll just default to the latest uh, stable version. So you can see that was changed. So now this is all set up locally, but we don't actually have anything up on GitHub. So to do that, I'm going to, I think I'm already logged in. So I'm gonna go over here and go to my repositories. And then actually, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna go here at the top, click this plus icon, click new repository. I'm going to use the same name as my project for consistency's sake. Uh, a simple Strava clone. Um, let's see, should I enable? I am going to do Travis CI. I don't know what's going to happen if I enable this now because I don't actually have a .travis CI file in my project yet. Um, for now, actually, I'll, I'll leave that off for now. I'll create this repository. And since we already have one, we have git installed an existing repository. I'm just going to copy this and then paste it into my terminal. And it should push this up. If I refresh the page. Yep, everything's here. So this seems like a good place to leave off now and we'll catch you in the next one.